Yeah, this is all coming together very quickly, but he's been ruled out for tonight's game. Um, as my colleague Adrian Wozner actually reported, he's considered day to day with a right knee sprain, but it does not sound good, especially with Kawhi. He's taken a couple spills in games one and game two and always gotten up, but he's played some heavy minutes. And uh, for the Clippers, look, this is just another another instance where they've had another massive injury to their playoff fortunes. The LA Clippers are easily the most cursed franchise I think I've ever seen. Both of what looked to be their most promising eras of basketball, all within the last decade, by the way, has been absolutely destroyed by the exact same thing, injuries. Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, especially towards the end, they could never really stay on the floor together when it mattered, and it felt like whatever could go wrong did go wrong, and that's what ultimately ended that underwhelming-ass era. And now, Kawhi and Paul George, a duo that has clearly a much higher ceiling, it's the exact same thing, and in fact, it's actually worse. Kawhi Leonard's knees, they're just bad, bro, like they're gone. He's not even experiencing pain from the surgically repaired knee, it's the other one. And let's be real, like I believe even Clippers fans came to this conclusion officially. The Clippers, with that duo, they're never winning an NBA championship. We have four years of proof now. The closest they've come, and the closest they will ever come to me, is the bubble, when they had four months off and they fizzled out after having the 3-1 lead. And the saddest part about all of this is how great Kawhi is when he actually plays and how easily we can become fans again while watching him. In Kawhi's last 30 regular season games, and this might really be what ultimately ruined the season looking back at it, but this man was playing 36 minutes a game in this 30 game stretch. That don't even sound right in the context of Kawhi Leonard. Do you know that was the most minutes per game he's played in a 30 game stretch in his entire career? He's literally never done that and obviously he's not built to do that. In this span in which they needed him to play all these games, especially with the West tightening up and Paul George getting hurt, Kawhi was averaging an efficient 27. Out of everybody that averaged at least 25 points a night in this span, he was one of the most efficient. So Kawhi was being Kawhi, but Kawhi's body was also being Kawhi's body. With that extremely heavy abnormal workload for Kawhi towards the back end of the season, he carried that to an even heightened workload against Phoenix, and it obviously backfired. In the first two games, in which when he plays again, he's phenomenal. He was averaging 35 points a night, but he was playing 40 minutes a game. In the first two playoff games, and obviously it's an extremely small sample size, but given the context of what he just came off of in the regular season and his history, it's, it's significant. In his first two playoff games, he was averaging the third most second half minutes out of anybody in these entire playoffs. And the only two players that's above him are the two players on a team with literally no bench. Coming off of missing the entire last season and then missing a good portion of the beginning of this season and then wrapping up his minutes into abnormal territory, that was really a disaster waiting to happen. Now, the person I really feel sorry for in all of this is Tyron Lu. Reportedly, he didn't even know Kawhi was missing game three until that morning's shoot around. Imagine still in home court against the overwhelming conference favorites without one of your best players when nobody really gave you a legitimate chance just to figure out that your best player when you come back home won't even return for who knows, possibly the rest of the damn playoffs. Bro, for all y'all Clippers fans crying about Ty Lue and his rotations, favoritism, all this stuff that I see on Twitter, let me really unpack the trash ass hand he's been dealt since joining the Clippers. Since becoming the coach of the LA Clippers, they've played 236 games total. He's coached Kawhi for less than half of them. He's only coached Paul George for 141 of them. He's only coached them both for less than a season's worth of games. That's insane. Do you know LeBron and Russ, they've played significantly more games in their season and a half together than Kawhi and Paul George did in Ty Lue's span of coaching them. In the playoffs, in which he's gotten them to their first ever Western Conference Finals without Kawhi for a good portion of that season, and got them to the play-in tournament without Kawhi all last year and PG for a significant amount of time, and this year they battle injuries. He's coached 23 playoff games. He's missed Kawhi for 10 of them. I mean, what more can you really ask for from a coach? Every time I watch the Clippers in a very important game, and I'm sure you guys notice the exact same thing, I see one common theme. Steve Ballmer, the owner of the Clippers, absolutely losing his mind when something goes good. I mean, he literally looks like he bet half his portfolio on every single Clipper game he watches. But why is he going off like that? Probably because he invested a ton into this one thing to work, and it hasn't. 
this season, the Clippers, they have the highest payroll in the entire league, and they have the second highest luxury tax bill only behind the team that just won four championships in seven years. What do the Clippers have to show for any of that? Nothing. Next season, assuming they keep Russell Westbrook, to me they should, but even if they don't, they're going to be right back in the ballpark with one of the highest payrolls in the league and one of the highest luxury tax penalties in the league. And do they really have a real chance at a championship with Kawhi's knees and their injury history? I'm going to say no. Maybe Pop was on to something and he saw something that we just really didn't see. Because if you look at Kawhi's first five seasons in which they had Tony, Manu, Tim Duncan, Aldridge, the dynasty, all this stuff, Kawhi didn't miss this many games. The low management probably preserved a lot of the first half of his career and obviously he was younger but still. But if you look at after Tim Duncan retired and he got more notoriety, the superstar status, more expectations, his games, his career, all that stuff kind of went downhill. Clearly, he's a better, more seasoned, polished, mature player. He grew into his game and he maxed out his potential, but he's a significantly less reliable player and the best ability in anything is always going to be availability. So I, I don't know, man. I'm hurting for the Clippers. Shout out Russell Westbrook. He's playing out of his mind. But Ty Lu, Steve Ballmer, everybody that invested all this to make this work, I feel sorry for them because they're not getting any dividends on their investment because they're never there.